returns October 17th, part of CBS Premier Week on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. changing jackpot for you. It's worth an estimated $81.7 million. So get those tickets out. Let's play. That first number up is eight. Followed by the number 46. Tonight we're going to meet Castulo Gonzalez, who won $250,000 playing Powerball. Now for the rest of those numbers, we've got 48, 53, rounding it out with 42. Your Powerball number tonight. Good luck, everyone is 22 and your power of play multiplier is three let's take a look at those numbers one last time remember there are multiple ways to win we'll see you back here wednesday night good night everyone live from augusta we're watching news 1226 at 11. After the rain in some areas this evening, the cooler temperatures are looking promising as we end Labor Day. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Zaina Halliburton. We're sending things right on over to First Alert Meteorologist Emily Acton on what we can expect the rest of the week, Emily. Well, I have some good news for you. We have that false fall maybe last week or the week before, and then it got hot again. But... Things are cooling off for our work week this week. We did see some showers earlier today, but that was uh, thanks to a cold front that is moving through. We're still in the 70s, but we'll drop a few more degrees overnight tonight. That rainfall has moved out of our area. There's still maybe a few light showers in our southern counties, but overall, most of us are dry. And we're going to stay dry overnight tonight. We can expect to see those lows drop off into the upper 60s, low 70s in some spots. So not a bad start to our Tuesday. We'll warm up into those middle 80s, but we're going to be below average throughout the rest of our work week, and I'll tell you more about it coming up. Thanks, Emily. In just a few hours, one of the two ways to reach the Augusta Regional Airport is shutting down. The south end of Doug Bernard Parkway will be down for nearly a month. Your Hallie Turner joins us live from Doug Bernard right now. And Hallie, how will this impact travelers for most of this month? <sighs> Well, Zaina, it's been really busy out here tonight. We're about to have a semi pass us now. And these Augusta drivers will be hitting a major roadblock on D Doug Bernard Parkway come tomorrow morning. This part of the road not only connects the south side to Augusta, but it gives drivers two access points to the airport. But starting tomorrow morning, again, like I said, everything is changing. The directions on the runway are pretty cut and dry. But thanks to construction starting Tuesday, the road to get there won't be. City leaders say the time to plan your new route starts now. If you're one of the thousands of people who travel the south end of Doug Bernard Parkway on a daily basis, what will your new drive look like from now until September 22nd? Well, let's find out. Signs are posted and orange barrels are out, signaling to you road work improvements are on their way and are here to stay until September 22nd. They'll start just before you reach the north entrance of the airport, meaning the five-minute drive you may be used to taking from I-520 to get to this entrance won't be an option. Instead of getting off on exit 10, you'll want to stop and exit early and get off on exit 9. The only way you're able to get into the parking lot is from Tobacco Road. Depending on the traffic, the drive will tack on an extra few minutes before you reach the red light. Now, we reached out to traffic and engineering for more specifics on what the project entails, but here's what we do know. It's exactly what this sign right here behind me says, is that it's going to be closed starting tomorrow morning, and the access points from I-520 to Tobacco Road will remain unaffected. But if you're right here where the north gate of the Augusta Airport is, you're not going to be able to drive here in the morning. So if you're, you know, you're coming this way to catch a flight, or this is how you travel to work, you're going to want to find another route. You can't get down to the south end again right here. Thank you for that reminder. Again, that starts tomorrow. That's going to last until the 22nd. And Hallie, thanks for following.
following this, so be mindful if you're heading in that area tomorrow. Georgia Department of Transportation's lane closures and road work is also set to start back up tomorrow after suspending it for Labor Day weekend. Across the river in South Carolina, the DOT is looking into widening Belvedere Clearwater Road from Old Sudload Road to Jefferson Davis Highway in Aiken County. The highlighted road on your screen is where the road is. This road widening project is expected to add two more lanes along with a bicycle lane and sidewalk. The plan is for this to work um, rather to start next year. It could take up to 36 months to finish. Former Augusta Commissioner Sammy Sias, convicted of destroying or falsifying records in federal investigations, is back in Georgia. The Federal Bureau of Prisons website says Sias is at Residential Reentry Management Atlanta. It's described as a community-based program that serves as a partnership between community groups and federal correctional groups. Sias received a reduced prison sentence, taking six months off of his 36-month original sentencing. Water issues from this weekend are continuing in Williston, with kids set to go back to school tomorrow. The mayor says multiple water main breaks caused a boil water advisory this weekend and continue today. In a statement, Mayor Brett Williams says the city's optimistic an offline well in the city will be online Wednesday. The Barnwell County School District says it's taking precautions for students by providing bottled water, hand sanitizer, and will prepare food in accordance with safety guidelines. Staying in South Carolina, you can make your voice heard about the penny sales tax in Aiken as school leaders host the first of five public meetings to discuss the tax. The list of meetings run through this month and into late October. The tax helps with construction and repair projects along with classroom additions. If the penny sales tax is renewed, it would allow for additions and projects at South Aiken and Midland Valley High Schools, along with Silver Bluff High, North Augusta Middle School, and the construction of a new elementary school in Area 3. You can see that list of meeting times again in more details on our website, wrdw.com. Some Georgians are gaining access to prescribed medical cannabis if they have a medical THC card right here in Augusta. We have one of the first pharmacies in the state stocking up on medicine, saving some people long drives. There are 50 pharmacies listed on the Georgia Department of Community Health website that are licensed, and the only one in Augusta is at Living Well Pharmacy. Pharmacists can know... Uh, things about their current medication, uh, even if they're not a member of that pharmacy, certainly we can ask them what their medications they're on, the questions and help things that were not being asked in dispensaries. On September 26th, the Living Well Pharmacy is hosting a card event where they'll have doctors on site to help people learn if they're qualified to get a medical THC card and assist in the application process. As Labor Day wraps up, we checked in with Georgia DNR to see how things have gone at the lake this summer. Officials at Clarks Hill Lake said it was a slower Labor Day than the last couple of years, but they did see people taking better safety precautions, saying that the number of BUIs, accidents, and drownings is zero for this weekend, with increased patrols out as well. Of course, we enforce the lake very heavily, especially during these holiday weekends. We've been fortunate enough to have a very safe uh, Labor Day weekend. And we haven't had any major incidences. Everybody's been been cooperating, but I believe that has come from our enforcement over the past few years. Georgia DNR also says the lower number of voters could also be due to the lower lake levels. As college students return to campuses across South Carolina, some of them are receiving extra scholarship money this year because of what they're studying. Students majoring in education can receive up to nearly $10,000 in additional money over their time in college, on top of scholarship money that they already get the Life or Palmetto Fellows Scholarship. With South Carolina facing a shortage of teachers, the State Teachers Association hopes this will help. Some of these individuals are going to be able to get their last three years of college covered in full which means they'll walk out with no student debt, which makes it far more attractive to walk into the teaching profession. It also makes it far more financially realistic to walk into the teaching profession. However, if there is a trade-off for every year a student receives this scholarship enhancement, they have to work in a South Carolina public school or else they have to pay the money back. Well, tomorrow is looking pretty windy. Same story for Wednesday as we have that cold front officially pushed through. Rain chances are still on the seven-day. I'll have it all broken down coming up. Every time you visit Parker's Kitchen, your support makes a difference, impacting education for kids of all ages. And none of this happens without you. Hey. 
Colorful hot air balloons were part of the Labor Day fun in Anderson, South Carolina this morning while benefiting cancer patients. The beautiful balloons brightened up the launch field at the Anderson Civic Center. With each takeoff, participants donated money to the Cancer Association of Anderson. It provides financial, emotional, and physical assistance to cancer patients in the area. For the past few years, the hot air affair has been helping one of the participants speaking about the event. They're going through chemo, they're going through radiation, they're sick, they don't feel good. Um, and we've taken people off that their family has said, hey, they haven't smiled in three months, and they smiled when they flew in the balloon. Uh, a memory I'm sure they'll always remember. Unfortunately, though, the weather prevented the balloons from having a full launch, but did not stop the show or kids from having a good time. So certainly kids still having fun no matter what. And Emily, here at home, though, we did see some stormy weather, too. Uh, but the good news is, I guess... How are things looking forward? I know we still have rain probably in the forecast, but we'll have to just take it. Yeah, we do have rain, but the good news is cooler temperatures. And I, I mean, I think I can speak for almost all of us that we are excited about some cooler temperatures finally moving in. Right now, sitting in the 70s, 74 feels like 74. Those winds coming from the north-northwest at about 3 miles per hour. And that's going to be the story. Those winds are going to continue to come from the northwest, and that's going to feed into our cooler temperatures here. And, that, again, that's going to continue over the next couple of days. We are dry now. Saw some showers earlier in the afternoon and evening for us, but conditions are dry for the rest of the overnight night hours throughout the day tomorrow we're going to start off partly cloudy and then that's going to continue throughout the afternoon we'll warm up into those middle 80s to start off wednesday looking pretty overcast for us and that's going to stay true really throughout the greater part of the day wednesday once we get into thursday though that's when the rain chances are going to come back into play and i'm going to show you the seven day there's going to be a couple of rain icons on there but just remember when it's all said and done over the next seven days we can expect anywhere from one to maybe two inches of rainfall so we're really not talking crazy totals here so just know that those showers are not going to last all day every day and they're going to be passing relatively quickly something i do want to point out though bring your attention to those wind gusts are going to be uh, pretty gusty for the next uh, 48 hours we can expect to see wind gusts anywhere from 20 to 25 miles per hour tuesday looking a little bit better for your wednesday around 20 mile per hour wind gusts so just know if you have any uh, outdoor maybe umbrellas chairs things Things like that uh, garbage can definitely want to make sure that those are secure as we go throughout the day tomorrow and even Wednesday for us overnight tonight we're going to cool off into those 60s. So starting off tomorrow morning in the upper 60s, really uh, not too bad out there for your Tuesday. Wednesday looking mostly dry and cooler, 83s, only what we're going to reach for those high temperatures. Rain chances come into play Thursday. That'll last into Friday and Saturday morning. But again, it's not going to be that widespread rain. I know we have lots of events going on this weekend, but... Just know there is going to be a chance. Make sure you have that rain gear with you. But, hey, 80 on Friday for the high temperature? That's not looking too bad, Zayma. Hey, I'll take 80s. That's nice. Six people were shot after a bowler took a shot at setting a new world record in Kentucky today. They were at the lane since midnight, attempting the most strikes in a 24-hour period. The proceeds are going to the Friends for Life Cancer Support Network. The team needed 1,200 strikes to get into the Guinness World Record books. An earlier check with them as of this afternoon says they hit 1,285. Certainly, they broke that record. Good for them and great cause. Coming up in sports, a local South Carolina woman is set to compete this week in Paris. The stage is set for a Paralympic dreams to come true. Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. Hit me with the checklist, honey. Luggage? Check. Kids? Check! Butler trip check? Before you leave town, check with the butler. With our complimentary trip check, we'll inspect all your major safety components and parts to ensure your car is running its best. With multiple locations convenient to you, just let the butler do it. A weaker than expected. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. On your sideline. After Johnson native Ellen Geddes qualified for the Paralympics, we sat down with the fencer who just learned that she is the first woman to qualify for back-to-back -back games in 20 years. This week, she has an off at 11.30 a.m. 
Okay, for the second year in a row, Clemson has lost the season opener. While the loss stings for Tiger fans, it gave Dogs fans a foundation of expectation moving into their first home game. Carson Beck moved to 14-1 as their starting QB, 6-1 against top 20 teams. Saturday, he hit nine different targets, three of them new. Vandy transfer London Humphreys in that mix. Two receptions for 63 yards and his first TD in red and black. He's proven himself as a guy that can make plays, and, and he was ready when his number was called. And we talk about it all the time. Is your opportunity's coming. Are you going to seize the moment when the moment jumps in front of you? And he did that. Smart also provided an update on Michael Williams. Williams was hurt on a block by Clemson's Phil Moffa. The defensive lineman has an ankle sprain and it's questionable this week. Okay, over in Columbia, it feels like deja vu. It became an unwanted staple of last year's offense. Lenora Sellers was sacked four times Saturday. Spencer Rattler was sacked ten times that last season. Those numbers can add up quick at South Carolina. It's what led Rattler to use his legs last season. Sellers should do the same this season. For as many attempts Sellers had in the air Saturday, he had that in carries on the ground. 22 for 68 yards, the second leading rusher of the night. And go ahead and scan that flow code if you haven't already and vote for your game of the week. South Aiken versus North Augusta, Lakeside, and Evans are leading the charge there. Before we go, another tour season is in the books, and it was quite possibly the best we've seen in two decades. Press play on the recording. Scotty Scheffler is a champion once again. The Green Jacket gold medalist captured his first FedEx Cup with a total of 30 under. It was the third straight year Scotty started with a two-stroke lead. That brings his season total to seven, the most tour titles since Tiger Woods in 2007. Yeah, I, I really don't know how to put it into words. It's been a, a very eventful year, but it's been a lot of fun. You have the, the really just the one weird spot there at Valhalla, which uh, <laughs> I just don't really know what to say about it. But um, yeah, everything else has been been pretty special. Maybe the last couple years I put too much pressure on myself to perform or whatever it is. Um, but you know, this year I did a good job of just staying in it mentally and keeping my head down and just had a really good week and was able to finish off the right way. Okay, interestingly enough, the Olympic gold medal is not being counted in his total by the PGA Tour. His win brings his total season long first to $62 million. So what is he going to treat Meredith with? Exactly, yeah. I mean, $62 million, you can buy a, a few things with that, I would say. <laughs> Looking at the next seven days coming up, but it is going to have a few showers in it, so don't be too alarmed. We'll have it broken down one more time after the break. Five and Temp, brought to you by your first alert weather team. I'm attorney George. Our first alert has always given you the edge against severe weather. And now, with our new first alert radar network, first just got even faster. With up to 10 times the resolution of other local radars and technology that can pinpoint right down to your street, first just got faster. A 99-year-old woman in Ohio is celebrating an achievement decades in the making, getting her high school diploma. So she had to quit high school to help her family during World War II, leading her to work as a janitor at a pharmacy for years. But she still wanted to get that diploma. That dream came true last week when the Board of Education there held a special meeting to present Georgia McGarry with her diploma, along with a cap and gown, of course. So the principal of the school she used to attend presented her with the diploma. Man, those have some high awesome. expectations now for some 99-year-olds. Yeah. That just goes to show nothing is impossible. If you have a goal, you have a dream, you can accomplish it at any age. Yeah, at any age. That's crazy. Kudos to her. That's awesome. I wonder what her so credits sweet. were like back then and what she had to do now to, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Why would not be? So, I mean, that's, hmm. that's a lot of years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. Do they have to adjust some things? Yeah. Some questions. Hmm, uh, a little different. Okay, we need more information. Either way, she got the diploma. So <laughs> <laughs> still the diploma yeah. Right. yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's really cool there. I want to take a final look at weather before we go. Seven days, not looking too bad, I would say. We're going to be in those 80s for the high temperatures for the next seven days. Overnight low is going to be in the 60s. We do have a couple chances of showers, but just know it's not going to be all day long for your Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But just know you're going to need the rain gear if you have any outdoor plants. Okay, noted. Thanks, Emily. That's all our time for News 12 at 11. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in to News 12 this morning starting at 430. Have a good night.